In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use Django to create this automated diagram, which showcases all of your tables and fields that you have in all of your applications, all of your apps, for example, inside of a Django project. This diagram has been automatically generated from a project, the e-commerce project. Here you can see all the applications we have for the apps um, we have inside of this project. So the account app, uh, the orders, the store. Um, what else we've got here? I think that's all we've got here. And you can see all the tables, all the fields and all the connectivities that we have, the connection, sorry, we have between the app models. So it's a really quite interesting diagram to create. Here, for example, we have a custom user. We've created a custom table for a user and we're bringing in the abstract base user. This is a, a inherited from a Django class. And you can see this kind of answers the question why, for example, when we built the custom customer table, we didn't include the password. And that's because we're extending the abstract base user. So if we take a look at this automated diagram that's created for us, you can see here, for example, we have a custom customer table um, and it's connected to the abstract base user. This is a class that's pre-created in Django. And you can see this answers the question why when we create a custom user table, we don't include the password field because that's automatically generated for us when we extend from the abstract base user. So just little things like that is quite interesting. It takes us into the contrib of tables, for example, that are generated in Django. Moving across here is a, a table that we've created or an app we created here and all the different tables from the product table and all the connections. And over here we have the sessions table. So you can generate a similar graph in your project um, utilizing the tools and the process that I'm just about to show you. So in order to get this working, first of all, we're going to need to install the Django extensions. Now, if you don't know what the Django extensions is, it's a collection of custom extensions for the Django framework. I'm just reading from here. Um, but in actual fact, in all seriousness, there's a great video here which you can watch and have a look to see what this provides you. So there's a few tools here that's going to be needed for us to then move on and actually create these graphs automatically. So the first step, simply put, let's pip install this. So this is a project. There's a link in the description if you want to try it out on this project first. There's a few tables. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and pip install the Django extensions. And now I'm going to tell you that I'm working in Windows. So the process here will be different based upon whether you're running Windows, Linux or Mac. So if you're not running Windows like me and you do have Mac or Linux, just go ahead to the extensions uh, documentation, head over to graph models and just have a little read through. There's a few different options here. We're going to follow a slightly different path because like I said, we're using Windows here. So the first thing we're going to do is get hold of this graph viz application. So let's just click on that. Uh, welcome to graph viz. Um, so this is going to provide us the tools that are going to generate this and we need to go to the download section and you can see there's a package here for Ubuntu, uh, but we're using Windows. So let's go ahead and let's just download um, running Windows 10 64 bit. So just go ahead and download this. OK, so all you need to do is run this as per normal. And I think I've already installed this in actual fact, but let's just see if I can go through this. Just one option that you'd probably want to um, select, and that's to add the graph is to the system path for all users or the current user. OK, so that's pretty much it. And then run that along and that should be absolutely fine. So let's just uh, give that a go. I think uh, we've already got this installed. OK, so uh, once that's done, let's remember that you probably need to kind of reset or restart the terminal in order for this to happen. So most of the times I'm just going to restart Visual Studio Code. That generally works. So before we move on, let's not forget to add the Django extensions to our app. Now, if you're using this here, you're going to find it in core and then settings and then base. So that's where you're going to find the, the app installed apps. So let's go ahead and just make sure we've got that in. That's the Django extensions in our settings file. In this case, I'm using base Pi. That's just a slightly different setup. So now we need the library to actually generate the image. There's two here that suggest that's been suggested. Now, 
On Windows, you probably will find that this probably won't run. So if you try to pip install this, you'll probably receive an error. Uh, there we go. So um, if you read through the error, potentially you could get that working by installing um, Microsoft Studio, Microsoft Visual C++ 14.0. Um, so that may be a solution there, but you can get a way of running here the pi dot. Uh, so let's go ahead and run that. Okay, so with those two things now installed, let's just go back to these instructions here. And it gives us a general overview of what potentially s some of the settings might look here. Um, so graph models, uh, all applications true, group models true. So we can kind of start to define whether we want to maybe make a model of a single model um, or an application or all of them. So let's just copy and paste that into our settings um, at the bottom here. So we're going to select all applications, um, all models essentially. Uh, so that's now in place. So I guess all that is left to do is to actually run the application. Now we can also select um, different apps. So let's just go down here and let's have a go. So you can see here that we've got this command here. Um, for the pi dot. So if we just grab that, this is the name of the file that we're going to run. Now, by all means, go into the pi dot uh, application, have a look at all the different flags here, what they mean. Uh, so let's go back in and let's just run this command. Um, so I'll put it here so you can see what we're running. Obviously, we're going to need a, a pi at the start of that. Give that a go. That should then now generate a new file on the left hand side here. you can see we've got this new image open that up and there we go we now have our visual representation of all of our models so you might be wondering why i'm using windows to show tutorials instead of linux or mac so stack overflow is a wonderful resource if you haven't already started utilizing it to help you and support you when you're developing it is a massive community uh, whereby you can ask questions and try and seek answers to common problems or problems that you're having. So each year they perform a survey and this is a, a survey predominantly answered by developers. So 65,000 developers answered the 2020 survey. So you can have a look at some of the results that are found here and it's quite interesting. So for example here, if you're for example new in this industry or thinking about going into this industry and you're not too sure maybe what technologies to select or learn. Well here for example most popular technologies at the moment is JavaScript. Um, that seems to be the most popular. Um, professional developers and all respondents, for example. Uh, most loved, dreaded and wanted. So the most dreaded is quite interesting. VBA, of course. Yep. Um, and most wanted, Python. So it kind of gives you an insight where these de professional developers potentially are looking to move into. Um, Python being obviously something that is becoming more popular. They need it because potentially of the uh, machine learning and AI type of areas that are developing at the moment or coming forth uh, forward in the industry or becoming popular, sorry, in, in, in the industry. So developing environments and tools. So this gives us a nice insight in the fact that most people are still using Windows to develop on. So that really answers that question, but I just wanted to make you aware of this resource because it is fairly interesting. If you have a look at some of um, these results uh, somewhere, for example, um, let's have a look at see if we can find uh, the tools environment and tools so let's go down um, to see if we can so github being up top end slack uh, research tools influence paying technologies uh, correlated technologies that's fairly interesting um, and that gives you a great insight here the correlated technologies so if you're thinking about uh, android it gives you a good insight of the type of skills that potentially you need to start thinking about here um, now somewhere down here, I'm sure we saw kind of um, I'm sure we saw Django in a in a list of of softwares. It's somewhere, it was quite high up. Anyway, you get the idea. Hopefully that's this is kind of valuable. It could be quite interesting for you. Uh, thank you very much for listening and I'll see you in the next tutorial.